What does it cost to design and develop a mobile app? One billion dollars. One billion, not a million? <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess in this market it's a billion dollars, right? That's the, that's, the, that's the bar. From Mobilecast Media's headquarters in Silicon Valley, this is Mobile App Development TV with John Houghton. Welcome to Mobile App Development TV. I'm your host, John Houghton, and today we're talking about mobile app development cost and design. We're joined in the studio by Pete Petras. Pete is the U.S. Creative Director for Globant. And Globant is a technology service provider that focuses on developing compelling experiences, and they have particular expertise in mobile. How are you doing today, Pete? I'm doing well, thanks, John. What does it cost to design and develop a mobile app? One billion dollars. One billion, not a million? <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess in this market it's a billion dollars, right? That's the, that's the, that's the bar. Um, no, uh, that, that all depends on the length of the project. Um, it all depends on the complexity of the app. Um, and ultimately, whatever, whatever the cost is that you figured out um, that it will actually take to develop, um, I mean, you can do uh, uh, an analysis and say, hey, we have X amount of people that cost us X amount of time, right? And, it, and we predicted that this takes six months or nine months to, to develop. Um, and therefore, that's our budget or that's, that's what it's going to cost us. Um, I would say times that by two, maybe by three. Um, because nothing ever goes the way you think it'll go. And a month into it, you're going to have to grow the team by two, maybe even by three. And then who knows? Um, and you'll have other costs that you won't take in consideration. Licensing. Who knows? I mean, there are, there are all sorts of elements that um, are always unforeseen and, and um, it will definitely cost always more than you really think it will. So this is typical software development, you might say, with the added element that people haven't done this type of thing before. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is your standard software development. I think um, the real uh, shift from being a standard software development is really a focus on user experience, I think, with, with uh, Apple and a, and a lot of uh, the the startups, the the Square, the Instagram, etc. These rich experiences that have really set the bar for um, what you know users expect. On top of that, paired with the adoption of smartphones, has made this just a different platform and a different focus uh, to really spend your attention on. Um, but otherwise, those those problems are still the same. I think. Um, you know, you, the teams are structured a little differently now. Uh, the approach is different, um, and I think it's for better. And I think a lot of this has a trickle down or trickle back effect to um, other software uh, development um, aspects. So the ability to understand uh, your users, to have a, a, a user focused uh, um, product definition is, is definitely a thing that um, isn't just unique to mobile development. It's uh, something that goes uh, beyond that to all sorts of different products that, that we all use or will develop for. So I think if everybody's following Steve Jobs in this industry and him pushing towards the idea of having a delightful user experience and delighting the user, and those are the words he used, and then he was able to push his whole company in that direction. Yeah, so Apple Apple's a, a unique uh, case. I mean, Apple did a very interesting thing. They they far, it was basically a Dieter Rams 2.0, if you will. And and it's not to demean anyone within um, Apple by any means. I mean, it's uh, it's something I love. I think that the hardware, the the ID is 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 beautiful. It's simplistic. It's the attention to detail is is impeccable. For those that don't know, what is Dieter Rams 2.0? Uh, so Dieter Rams is, uh, uh, was the chief um, creative director for Braun, um, and he designed this uh, very simplistic design language. And it's been resurrected by Johnny Ives um, at Apple um, and expanded onto the di digital products. Um, and it has a very similar par parallel um, uh, design principle involved. I mean, a lot of it's just simplicity core of, uh, of the function, um, and ultimately, what it does really well, not just the, the, the details of it, but it ultimately does what design should do, is it's, it's invisible in a way, um, especially when you're talking about an iPhone. When you look at the iPhone, all eyes are on the interface. Um, the iPhone itself is just a frame, and it's such a beautiful frame. Um, it's an amazing frame that they've, they've created this element of luxury because of the, the quality aspect of this. So now with iOS 7, 
you have this, um, finally, you have this unification of, of Apple's digital offering. You had this hardware product that was actually unified. You had this design language that came along. But as iPhone was first uh, introduced, all the different uh, digital properties within the iPhone started drifting apart. You had a lot of the skeuomorphic stuff. You had, um, you know, the App Store. You had all these different departments. What's but the what's the skeuomorphic? Skeuomorphic is basically um, something that is pretending to be something it's not. Um, a fake leather uh, interface or fake wood right. or taking on. Um, uh, the look and feel of, of, sort of other being a, objects. a metaphor for a physical object. Yeah. And it kind yeah. of all went away with iOS 7. So what iOS 7 did, whether people like it or not, um, it unified um, all the Apple uh, elements of the interface. So any of the actual iOS touch points were all unified under under iOS 7, which is great because it finally brought it together. Now they took a they took a step, um, you know, and beyond and actually went away from some of the best practices within user uh, user interface uh, design guidelines or U UX kind of design principles, and you know took buttons out of where buttons usually were and just relied on the actual titles and really made things simple. And I mean they did this to follow along with what they've done with the hardware product, right? So they took a really, um, you know, big, big step into designing something that was really premium, made it very expensive, but yet desirable. Obviously, we've seen this work. They're very successful at it. And they're doing the same thing with uh, the interface. They're unifying it, but they're also taking that step of making it very simple um, and also just focusing it on a particular client. Now, those design principles that they followed or they didn't follow um, aren't great. They didn't do the things that they needed to do to make things perfect. But then again, they're not designing the beige box, right? So they went away from designing beige, beige towers, beige computers. They're also not designing a beige user interface. Um, so they're taking that stance and, and shifting it a little bit towards the Apple side of things. Well, Pete, it's been great having you on the show. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, John. Appreciate being here. It's uh, great to see all the content that you've been producing, and uh, I'd love to see more. You have been watching Mobile App Development TV with John Houghton. Mobile App Development TV is part of the MobileCast Media blog. For more information, please visit mobilecastmedia.com slash blog. Thank you.